everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Jones and Four Show. Today, you are in for a treat. We have a guest chatting with us, working with us, and sharing his story. He's an author. He's a speaker. He's a person who can help you be your best and push through those hard times. I'm so lucky to call him my friend, and I'm so grateful to have him here sharing his story and advice with all of you. Please help me introduce my buddy, Jesse Cruz, to the show. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you so much, Spencer. I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me. It means a lot. Uh, I Likewise, brother. Uh, you have been here for me, supporting me, and I'm just so grateful to be helping you and share your story. So let's let's share your story a little bit. You came out with the book, Live Your Dash, uh, which is awesome. Absolutely love it. And when we were talking before you were sharing the story of what what happened to you that caused you to write it, right? That that brought you to write that book and share that story. So let's hear your story. Share it with our viewers and listeners. What brought you to the point where you are today? Right. So um, years ago, you know, I was a single parent. Um, and my wife at the time, she was a single parent as well. Um, and we had met each other. And we both had daughters at the time. And you know, we met each other at the park and eventually got married. And from that, you know, we said we wanted to have a child together. You know, I mean, we, got, we both had a um, child from a previous relationship and we wanted to have a child together. And so we had been trying for a while and then um, so for years and then finally it happened. And, you know, and we're like, oh, my gosh, she's, you know, my wife told me she's expecting when she told me that, you know, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And uh, it was one of the best days ever, you know? And um, so we all celebrated as a family because, you know, we all wanted another child in the family. And, you know, and then she was, everything was going as planned, you know what I mean? We found out we were going to have a girl. And so we were excited about having three girls, you know, a true girl, dad, you know what I mean? So going to have another girl. And, and all of a sudden things changed drastically. Um, she got to go to the emergency room multiple times and a lot of pain, but they kept sending her home. They kept sending her home. And I was like, what's going on? You keep saying you have pain, but they keep sending you home. She's like, I don't know. They're not doing nothing. And then she went back. And then like the third or fourth time she went back, they're like, you're going into labor right now. And we're like, oh my gosh, like it's January at this time. And, the, and our baby isn't due until May. Oh my God. But we're going in labor right now. And we need to rush you to an emergency hospital that has more, uh, a bigger setting. So they have more resources and more doctors and, and better care. So we're in this hospital room and my, my heart sank into my stomach because I knew what that meant. That meant that my daughter's chance of survival was so slim. Mm -hmm. because when you're four months premature, you usually are not born alive. You're right. just not. And, um, you know, as we're on our way to the hospital, you know, I'm, you know, we're praying and we're crying and we're, you know, just believing for a miracle. Could our daughter be born so early? We, we believe that she can. And so they roll, they, you know, they call for an ambulance immediately. We get in and we had, it's about a 45 to 55 minute drive to the hospital. And we get in there and I never had seen any medical staff move this fast. Like soon as they rolled her into the room, they're like, they asked us a question. They said, you know, do you want to have this child naturally or cesarean section? And I was like, well, what's, what are the odds? You know, which is the safest route? And they said, well, if she's born naturally, she has a 20 20% or she has a 15% chance of survival. And I was like, oh my gosh. So she only has 15% chance of being born alive. Right. And, and I was like, oh my God. And I said, okay, well, what about the C-section? So I was expecting a high odd to like 20% at best. <sighs> Me and my wife looked at each other. We're like, we're going to hang our faith on that 5%. That 20, you know, that 5% difference between that 15 and 20, we're going to take that five extra percent, you know? Right. So we took that, you know, so we're going to go with 20%. And, and literally as soon as I said 
let's do 20%, let's do the C-section. Before I could even finish the sentence, they had rolled my wife out of the room hmm. like instantly. And I, I want to basically go chase them down. And they said, you can't come in. Huh. And I was like, what? You know, I was a promise to myself. I'm always going to be there for my kids when they were born. Sure. I want to be right there. I couldn't this time. And that, that crushed me. I couldn't be there for my wife. I couldn't be there for my child. So I'm just devastated. Like I'm crushed. My whole dreams I feel like they're coming to an end, you know. And I don't know what's gonna happen. And so I'm just in the room, and you know, I had, I had my mom she prayed for me because I'm like, I'm so desperate. I just need help, and I'm I'm basically having a, a mental breakdown in the room. I, I was like my first panic attack I ever had. Like I, I was hyperventilating. I couldn't breathe. Um, I couldn't even talk. Like I, I was out of breath, but I wasn't even moving. So I, I had a complete panic attack and meltdown. Um, and then, you know, as she prayed for me, she's praying. And I'm just, as she's praying, I'm starting to feel better. I'm starting to feel that encouragement, you know, and, and that energy and and that peace is starting to come overcome my body. And I'm just like, I'm starting to feel better. And it's crazy because the second she said, amen, a nurse appeared in my room and said, she's alive. And I was like, Phew. I could breathe, you know, I, for the first time since the journey started a few hours ago, I could breathe. Right. Oh and um, so she was born alive and you know, my wife didn't even know because my, my wife was put under. And so she didn't know for hours. And so what even the results were, I wanted to go visit my daughter for the first time. And I was like, man, this is, she's amazing. It's beautiful. I loved it seeing her and, we just so we just kind of took our residence in the hospital for a while and then we were there for weeks and weeks and mm -hmm. 42 days she fought every single day i watched her flatline multiple times which is gut-wrenching enough watched her come back to life and on that 42nd day she took her final breath for the final time left me completely crushed and demoralized and there's days where it still hurts and it still struggles. Um, but without that painful struggle that I went through with my daughter, like I wouldn't have been able to become the person that I am. So my mission is to carry on her life and her legacy by making a difference and sharing my story and her story and making a difference. So this little one pound girl that no one has ever met is changing lives. So I encourage everyone who's listening, just imagine what you can do. If a one pound girl can do all this, you know, just imagine what a grown person can do. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what's got me to the point where I'm, I'm writing these books and I'm speaking. And so it's all because of her, you know, and that's, I just want to carry on her, her legacy and share it with the world. Well, first of all, I am so incredibly sorry for the loss of your daughter. Uh, that is huge and completely gut-wrenching. I personally have not experienced anything like that. And I can only imagine the depression that that would have sent you down into. But what I love, and I'm sure it did uh, to, to a degree, but what I love is the fact that you now use that experience, that painful time in your life to, to lift other people up, to help them and to encourage people to own the life that they have, right? The, the life your daughter wasn't able to have, but because she was alive, because she was there, she is, and you're sharing her story, she is able to inspire hundreds and thousands and millions of other people because of that story. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. And I just wanna do my best to continue to share it because there's everyone out there has a story. Everyone out there has been through some traumatic events, some pain, and they want to know that it's possible to overcome it. So why not, if you can't see the light, you know what I mean? Sometimes you got to become it. And that's what I've just been trying to do. I, I couldn't agree with you more, right? If you can't find that light, be the light. And I think we all should be the light at times in our lives. We all need to be that light and we all need other people's lights at times in our lives. Let's let's talk about your book and, and how you share that story and the whole outline of your book, because that book helps people. It, it saves people's lives in that book. Um, so why don't you share, walk us through that. But uh, real quick, I just noticed when, when you're talking, your microphone's rubbing against your collar. 
And so I hear you talking and every time you had to move stuff, so I just, just want to make sure we hear you clearly and hear your story and, and all that. Uh, so thank you. So let's, let's hear about your book um, and how you outline your journey of the steps in there and any stories you'd like to share uh, about writing it or anything really. Absolutely. So shortly after her passing, I just knew I had a lot of feelings within me I needed to get out and I didn't know how to do it. So I figured writing would be the best way to express myself. Mm. And so I just started writing every single day. I took a, a literally a pencil and a paper. Like I put it into a notebook. I said, I'm going to fill this notebook up until, until there's nothing, no pages left. And then I'm going to type it up and turn it into a book. So that's what I did. And I just started writing every day. And as I was writing, I noticed there was a theme that started to develop. There was like eight different areas of my life that got me through it. I didn't realize it at the time, but as I was writing, I was starting to see, man, these different areas of my life while I was in the hospital every single day, while I was um, watching her fight for her life, like these are the things that helped me and my whole family get through. Mm -hmm. um, so the story is not about my experience in the hospital. My, my story is the experience of what gets people to be successful and prosperous in life, no matter what has happened. And so I, I discovered those eight different areas. And so the full title is Live Your Dash, Discovering the Eight Fs to Freedom. And all these different areas all started with the letter F, you know, th so things such as like family and friendship and finance and fitness and faith and forgiveness and focus. And I start writing about all these things and I'm like, man, I'm going to turn this into a book because I know if it can help me, it can help somebody else. So I think when we discover something of value, um, it's completely selfish to not share it with the world. So if you have anything of value, which every human being does, I think it should be part of our mission to share it with the world. I, I totally agree. We all have value. We have all things to share that we can lift other people up, whether you write it into a book you do a podcast or a show, a movie, or you just share it through written word or blog post. It doesn't matter. Just share it because it can help and change someone's life. So out of those eight Fs in your book, which is, is there one that's more important than any others? Are they all equal? Uh, and let's dive into one of them. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, they're all obviously very important to me. Um, but I, I'll go um, with the first chapter because the first chapter to me is what is able to guide our lives and which is our focus. Mm -hmm. So what we think about our thoughts, you know what I mean? So if you don't got your thoughts right, you can't have your life right because your best action is only based on your best thought and your worst action is rooted in your worst thoughts. So your actions will never be better than any of your thoughts. So that's why it's so important to think intentionally and on purpose in your life. And I use the quote in my book is that your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts for good or for bad. So if we want to have um, a better life, then we need to think better thoughts. So to me, focus is so important. And, and that's why I started the book off intentionally with that chapter, because you know during the time I was going through, like, am I going to focus forever on the pain? And there's a season where I did, like all I thought about was, my suffering, my pain, my anguish, my heartbreak. And if I continued down that path for the rest of my life, I wouldn't be here right now. Um, but I had to make a decision that I had to choose to heal. And I started with my thinking, you know what I mean? And, and so that's why, to me, our focus is so important. We need to guard our thoughts and protect our joy at all costs. And it all starts with how we think. I love that. Start with that focus, right? Focusing on your thoughts, the good thoughts, the bad thoughts, because they make all the difference in the world. Uh, as you said, right? Your actions are based originally in your thought and it goes as far as them. So how can we improve our thought? How can we improve our focus? What strategies do you suggest we do? Mm -hmm. So for me, what's helped me tremendously is gratitude. Mm -hmm. So Anytime I'm expressing gratitude, I'm able to understand the blessings I have in my life. And once you have an attitude of gratitude, your whole perspective changes. So you're not going to meet a person 
who's full of gratitude and misery at the same time. You just can't do it. Those are, those are two opposites. So for people who are um, all over the place and, I, and I'm, I'm known to be scatterbrained. And so when I have that gratitude, it aligns my values and my priorities together with my thoughts and actions. So when I'm thinking about all the people, all the things, all my experiences that I am thankful for, it puts everything into the right perspective. And reminds me of what's most important. If I'm spending my energy focusing on things that aren't going to matter a year, five years, 10 years from now, I'm wasting my energy on them right now. And uh, therefore, I'm, I'm allowing people and things and situations that aren't my priority to rob me of that peace. So for me, it's, it's having that gratitude list, speaking it out loud, and then telling people about it. Because once you're able to say thank you, your whole focus will shift immediately. Those negative toxic thoughts can no longer take residence in your mind because your mind is so focused on the things that you've been blessed with, not the things you've been cursed with. Because even because when you go to an attitude of gratitude, even the things that you thought were cursing you are actually preparing you for greatness. I, I couldn't agree more. And I know I've had my personal experiences when I was being selfish. I was thinking about all the problems in my life. How did this go wrong? Why is this happening to me? And then when I switched to having the attitude of gratitude, I was looking for the positives. It shifted everything all of a sudden. And it was almost like a shining light moment where I go, oh my gosh, no, this was a blessing. This, I, I saw this and, and now I can learn and grow and be better because of this, or I'm grateful for this happening in my life. Now, not all of them are you know, turning on the light switch, all of a sudden it changes. Some of them you have to work on, but at least that's has been my experience. But once you have that attitude of gratitude, it, it changes the world uh, and the way you think and perceive everything. Hey, I'm really sorry to butt in like this, but I know you're gonna love this and I'm too, too excited to not share it with you right now. And that is Spencer's Energy Hub. Yeah, that's right, Spencer's Energy Hub. It is a community. It's the Jones and Four community. You're listening to the Jones and Four show or watching it, right? And now there's a community designed for you to have success. We want you to live your life to the max and we can help you. We can help you do that through the tips, techniques, and strategies we share in this show, but also within this energy hub. So what is it? Well, it is a membership crew that's a family. Right? We are a community who are there to support you, be in your corner when times get tough and when times are awesome. But there's more. You get weekly trainings. You get help, strategies, and, and ways to help you actually implement what you learn to have success so you can live your life to the max. Oh, and there's monthly interviews with experts and masters in their field sharing their knowledge with all of you so you can really take it, implement it, and have success in your life and go up that mountain faster and better than you could have before. You're here now, which is awesome. Now take it to the next level and join us at Spencer's Energy Hub. Go there and find out what it all entails and all that and sign up to join. Uh, just go to spencersenergyhub.com or spencermjones.com. You can find it there and click on it and make sure you check it out and join us in the hub. Can't wait to see you inside. So what, uh, how do you track your gratitudes? What strategies would you say for being more uh, grateful in our lives? What, do you have any specific tips or strategies that work for you? Yeah, well, so I actually made a list. I made a list of, um, that's a sheet. I hand wrote it in and um, it's three different categories. One says people, one says things, and the last category says other. And so what I, what I did was I spent a few minutes filling up as many names as I could. And I think I gave myself like five minutes, five to 10 minutes in each category. And I wrote, I literally wrote down every single person I could think of who I was thankful for. I wrote them all down. And then I went over to the next category, wrote all the things that I've been blessed to have in my life that I'm thankful for. And then it got to the category of other, and what I was learning about other is, is obviously not thing, it's not things or it's people, but it's, it's more like feelings and emotions such as uh, generosity or love or kindness or um, creativity, and knowledge and wisdom. So it's things like that that I'm thankful to have experienced in my life. 
And so when you take the time to write down people, things, and other, and you write it all down and you read it daily. So I read it daily, Mm -hmm. multiple times per day. Um, Anytime I'm ever in a funk, no matter what's going on, if I take out my gratitude sheet and I just read it, everything changes. My complete mood. I could have been, had the worst day ever. And if I start to read that, something changes within my spirit. And so that's why gratitude, it's one of the most powerful things that we can do. So I think having a gratitude list and having it with you, whether you're typing it in a phone or a computer or handwriting a piece of paper, but have access to it throughout your day and just open it up when you're having a, a challenging time throughout your day. And I guarantee that'll help your mood and, and help you be a, a better leader, um, it'll help you be better in your relationships, it'll help you in every area of your life. I love that. And I have something similar to that that I follow for my gratitudes, but I love your idea of making this massive list and you can continue adding to it and then just reviewing it throughout the day. Anytime you're in a funk, uh, I'm, I'm going to take that up. So thank you so much for that suggestion. Absolutely love it. Uh, we have time for one more F of your book. If you'd like to share it, that, that can really help people take hold of life and, and live it to the max. Mm-hmm. So for me, um, what I, the foundation of my life is my faith. Mm. Um, and, and no matter what people believe in, um, whether they claim to have their faith or have no faith at all, every human being has faith. It's just what you put your faith in. Right. You know, that's what people don't realize that, you know, everyone has obviously different beliefs of their, you know, whether it's religious beliefs or spiritual beliefs or whatever they may believe in. Um, but for me, my faith is what kept me going. My faith is what got me through the worst tragedy of my life because my faith has allowed me to take um, that crisis and turn it into a ministry to bless and encourage other people. You know, and I truly believe that's how God works. Like God loves his people so much that he doesn't remove the fire from our path. He loves us so much he'll join us in it. So we don't have to do it alone. He never promised a perfect life. He never promised an easy life. He didn't promise us a fair life. He never said any of that. But um, what I have learned is that the promise is that he will always be there. Even when we don't feel him, even when life is terrible. And so for me, my faith is what got me through. And if I didn't have that, man, it just... I, I'm amazed when I see people who are able to go through life without it, like without b- acknowledging that they have some sort of faith. Um, but for me, I mean, that's something I make a consistent acknowledgement towards, you know what I mean? And, and gratitude is to me is a form of that faith because you're, you're expressing good, you're expressing positivity and, you know, and I'm just so thankful to have that relationship, you know, cause to me it's, it's a relationship. And when you have a quality relationship, that prepares you for a quality life. And so my relationship with God is, is one built on love. And when you have that kind of love in your life, then there's really nothing that can stop you. I love that. I, I personally think faith is a huge aspect of our lives, whether it's a faith in a religion and, and a God of a religion or more of a spirituality or, or anything. It's just having that larger purpose, knowing that there's more to life than, than just you and yourself. It could be you impacting other people's lives and that's your larger purpose or doing whatever or having a God that walks with you, right? I'm not here to judge you. I'm not going to pass judgment on you with whatever you all believe, but having some kind of faith is huge. And I have heard from hundreds of people who have had tough times where God has helped them get through it, right? They have been there by their side. As you said, he doesn't promise an easy life or fair life. He doesn't, uh, I love the fact that you said he doesn't get rid of the fire, but he's there with you as you go through it. Because those experiences make us stronger, can make us better and help us make the world a better place by going through those experiences. You went through a crazy fire, something that broke you down, that, that just hit you extremely hard, rightfully so. But now, because of God, because of your faith, and because of your determination, you are taking that fire, that experience, and impacting hundreds of thousands and millions of people, which is absolutely incredible. So I applaud you for that and sharing those two Fs with us, right? Your focus, get your thoughts 
in, in the right place and using gratitude, right? And right, making that gratitude log as you did. And then your faith, so huge. Remind us again, and we don't have to go into detail, but what are the other Fs of uh, your book? So there's also fitness, okay. finance. Um, this next one, adults always forget about, which I love to talk about, was fun. Mm. Um, I, I believe life should definitely be fun for sure. And then um, also family, friendships, and forgiveness. I love that. And I, I think I personally think people struggle with the forgiveness aspect and the fun aspect of life, right? To forgive ourselves. We might be able to forgive other people, but we're hard on ourselves. And that's something to work on. Where can people get their hands on your book and learn more about you and be able to improve their lives? So people can connect with me um, by email, author Jesse Cruz at gmail.com or on Facebook, Jesse Cruz. Instagram is um, Jesse Cruz Speaks. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, those are all the ways to connect with me. And my book is on Amazon or for the people who want personalized copy. I sell a lot of personalized copy for those who, who want a specialized book. So uh, those are all the best ways to contact me. I love it. I love it. Love it, man. Um, so folks, we will have all the links for him, social media links and all that good stuff and link uh, to as Amazon uh, page where you can get his book in the show notes. So just go to spencermjones.com. Go to the Jones and Four show, find this episode, and you can access all links and make sure you connect with Jesse. His stories, his messages that he posts and shares on social media, it's uplifting, it's empowering. And get his book. It'll help you live your life to the max. It'll help guide you through those Fs in life to get the most out of it. So Jesse, one last question for you. If you have one piece of advice to share that can help our audience live life to the max, what would it be? It would be to, I think of the metaphor of Christmas, and I share this with a lot of people, is that when you wake up Christmas morning, there's a gift under that tree with your name on it. There's also some gifts under that tree that don't have your name on it. And if you take the time to open up gifts that don't have your name on it, it's not going to make sense. So sometimes people are so caught up in somebody else's gift and what they got, they can't focus on the gifts they've been given. So my suggestion is that since we all are gifted to find your gift, you open it up and you use it to the best of your ability. And once you're working within your gift, it's going to give the whole world a reason to celebrate. It's going to be, a, it's going to give the whole world an opportunity to be encouraged and to spread hope. So find your gift that has your name on it, open it up, use it, and then share it with the world because gifts are meant to be given. So give your gift away. What a perfect way to end it, to end this episode. Thank you so much for your time, your advice, and sharing your story with us. It is so impactful and so meaningful that, I, I mean, it, it moves me, and I can't imagine who it wouldn't move to take control of our life, to find our gifts and share them with the world. Thank you so much, Jesse, for joining us. Thank you, Spencer. If you like this episode, everyone, let us know. Take a screenshot of it, post it on social media, tag Jesse and me in it, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, and until next time, we will catch you all later.